All right, guys, uh, we got one more um, a, kind of a, a major adjustment that we need to do here. Uh, and this one here is probably, probably the one that gives gives guys the most fit. I mean, this, this one here will wear your ass out if you don't do it right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to time the downward travel of the needle with the actual presser foot. So the way these things work in cycle is <clears throat> the, the needle and the presser foot are going down, okay? The presser foot hits the needle plate, it stops. At some point the needle is right here. The needle penetrates through. They both go back together. Then the needle withdraws and then the presser foot and needle start lifting. And it has to happen in that order. What you don't want, you don't want the needle penetrating the material before the presser foot pins it down to the uh, to the feed dog. Okay, so touches, needle goes in, they go back, needle comes out, and then the vibrating presser foot lifts. What we're looking for is to get the same height on the front side, the same height of this needle relative to the feed dog, or excuse me, the the, uh, the the vibrating presser foot when it touches as we have on the back side when the vibrating presser foot starts to lift off the feed dog. Okay, so we want equal height here as is on the back side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to kind of look at this. I think this one here is set. said okay we're gonna cycle through and and right right there right there is where the feed dog touches or excuse me the uh, lift uh, vibrating presser foot touches the feed dog right there okay and notice the height of the needle Okay, so the tip of the needle is, you can see the tip of the needle is about right, about right there. All right, we have our, our stitch length set to a minimum stitch length, so this thing's not going to move very far. So we're going to cycle this through, it goes back. Now, you see the presser foot starts to lift right right there okay and you can see here the needle height on the back side is considerably higher than it was on the front side all right we'll do this again so it touches right right there's where it makes contact and you see the needle is you know I don't know maybe a, the tip of the needle is maybe a millimeter above the top of the presser foot right there's where it touches. We cycle on the back side and right there's where the presser foot starts lifting and that's I don't know probably about five millimeters or so. So what we have to do is we, we want to make those two heights the same. So we have we have two options. Uh, in this case the what we need to do is we need to advance we can either advance the needle faster in the cycle which is not what we need to do here because the needle is already too fast in the cycle we need to advance the presser foot to touch earlier in the cycle and release earlier in the cycle so <clears throat> how we're going to do that is with this cam right right back here let me stay out of the way here for a second You'll see this this cam here. It's just to the uh, to the left of the uh, operating height adjustment cam, and there are two screws on this. There's one screw right there, and there's a second screw right there. So, like all the other adjustments, we're going to loosen one screw, and then we're going to barely loosen the other screw, keeping keeping good control of that cam and we're going to adjust the cam up because that's what advances the presser foot in the cycle so we're gonna just 
loosen this one right here okay that's nice and loose and normally it's easier to do it from the back side but I'll try and I'll try and do it from the front side here okay so I'm gonna keep good control of this thing here Tim could you hold this uh, light in there so I could see because it's gonna take two hands to do this okay so you want to keep two hands on this all right it's gonna want to it's gonna want to spring loaded it's gonna want to spin on you keep positive control of this thing and I'm, I'm just barely loosening it and then I'm just gonna just a little bit up okay so I just advanced the presser foot in the cycle a little bit so we'll check it here so we're hitting right there right there right there so we're probably right there that's where we touch so you can see that we have grease off of there we have raised that needle on this side you know probably a good millimeter maybe a millimeter and a half which means it's going to lower on the back side so we're about right there we come in on the back side and that's where we lift so we're a lot closer the two are a lot closer but I want to I want to increase uh, or decrease that distance just a little bit more so I'm going to do the exact same thing again I'm going to come down to come down to that one screw um, Yeah, come on in. Hey, we're we're making it. We're making making a video here. Just one second. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, yeah, hold that, please. In there, I'm going to hold this thing nice and tight. I'm going to loosen it, keeping positive control of that sucker, and raise it up just just a little bit. Okay, and let's 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 look at it again here. So, so we are we're hitting right right there. Okay, that's the tip of the needle, right there, and right there. That's where it lifts. So that's that's pretty pretty even. Okay, and that's. <clears throat> You know, I mean, you, you could sit here and jack with that all day and try and get it exactly the same, but as long as you can eyeball and get that pretty close, then that's how um, that's how you make that adjustment. Okay, so uh, one thing, like I said, and I, I can't stress this enough, you got to keep positive control over this thing. And at this point, you're going to want to go ahead and tighten up your um, tighten up your screws. However, uh, those who do not heed this warning okay and let this thing let this thing slip what's gonna happen is this thing's gonna spin around it's, it's gonna be loaded it's gonna spin around like the thing will spin around on you alright mm -hmm. so guys will sit there and he'll try and do this if that happens what you want to do is just is lift up lift up the uh, the a presser foot lifting lever okay and it will expose that that screw and then you get a hold of it there you go okay get a hold of it get this sucker tightened and then you have to go through the whole process again of getting your your timing adjusted and and I think my needles too far right right there that's pretty good so yeah we're it came it came right back yeah it came right back to like, that was kind of a guess but uh it's it's pretty close so now I showed you what not to do I'm gonna tighten this thing up here before it gets out of control So, 
there you have it. All right, and that's how you adjust <coughs> the uh, the needle, the downward needle, the movement with the uh, the timing of the uh, uh, vibrating presser foot. Okay, guys, uh, this uh, this next uh, block here, we're going to talk about the safety clutch mechanism that's underneath the actual machine head. First thing I want to point out is, is this little button right here. Uh, I, I just looked up in the manual what the name of it is and it's called a button. And uh, really what this button does, uh, and you'll see here in a second, is when, when you push this down it's got a, a plunger that goes on the bottom side and it locks the, uh, the, the rotary hook um, shaft into place so that you can't turn the rotary hook and that's what you need to use when you're uh, resetting the safety clutch so that's a little button right there okay I'm gonna flip this up so underneath here I'm gonna push this button down and you can see you can see what happens that little plunger comes down and you see these little uh, cutouts in in the shaft right there that right there well those get locked when you when you press that button those lock the shaft into place and prevent the shaft from turning and that's what you need to use uh, to do if your safety clutch is is fired off if you get a jam so we have we have our safety clutch right here <clears throat> it's it's this piece of uh, piece of hardware right here and it's got it's got a hole in it and and this hole right here with this shiny thing in it <clears throat> that's actually a, a steel ball bearing right there so what this safety clutch does is it connects the actual drive shaft over here to the rotary hook shaft starting starting from right here all the way over to the rotary hook what happens is is whenever you get the rotary hook bound up or there's some type of um, uh, impediment and it, it prevents the rotary hook from from turning or you get you know thread bound up in there or whatever <clears throat> you got a lot of torque on this machine spinning spinning this drive shaft over here so when this thing gets bound up all of a sudden what what you want is you want this clutch to fire off and start free spinning with the actual drive shaft and that will separate the rotary hook from the the drive shaft here so that the rotary hook and all these little pieces and parts and stuff over here don't get bent and distorted and broken and stuff like that so as its name states it's a safety clutch mechanism and whenever we get bound up this thing fires off and prevents uh, over torquing of the rotary hook and the rotary hook shaft and stuff like that in here <clears throat> this is a, a a very highly overlooked uh, piece of uh, piece of maintenance here and a lot of the machines that we have back at the schoolhouse uh, these clutches were, were frozen into place and it took it took me some time to get them loosened up and broken free so that they would actuate when they were supposed to actuate so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to manually actuate this this safety clutch here. I'm going to turn this off too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate rotate this around, and I'm going to push this button on the uh, the bed of the sewing machine down when I when I get the ball up here. There we go. Okay, so I got I got the. Uh, I got this arm locked and I've got the uh, the reset ball in here so now I'm going to activate this and release the clutch and it should be something nothing more than just a simple quick jerk and it should release there we go okay so now what you can see is is as I turn this the actual drive shaft is turning but the rest of the rotary hook is in place as if there's a uh, uh, some type of binding or something like that and this is doing exactly what it's supposed to do it releases and the machine would just continuously keep on spinning <clears throat> however if I release this button now 
if I release the button, you see that the two are still somewhat connected. They will still rotate together, but your timing is going to be completely off. The timing between the rotary hook and the rest of the uh, machine is going to be off because we, we're, we're literally a half, a half a rotation out of sync. That's why, it's, that's why you have to use this button whenever you get your jam cleared or you fix your problem or whatever. You have to push this button back down, lock and lock the rotary hook shaft in place and spin this around until this, this ball snaps back into place right there okay so our ball is now back in that hole and now it didn't even it didn't even throw the timing off so your timing should be should be good to go so let's talk specifically about this the safety clutch here what it is is this is this is an actual ball bearing and behind that ball bearing is a spring pushing that ball into this little little hole right here and that's really the only thing that keeps keeps this part the uh, the actual drive shaft right here attached to the clutch and the 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 rotary hook shaft over here so when the force the uh, centrical or the actual rotation force is so great that it overcomes the pressure that this ball is pushing up into that into that hole then the ball gets pushed back down in the the spring retracts the ball gets pushed back in and, and the uh, the two the two pieces the drive shaft and the uh, safety clutch separate and <clears throat> you have to adjust the tension on this ball and that's what I found was incorrect on the machines that were up at up at MCAF where, where we were doing the training and the way that you adjust this is to I'm going to lock the shaft in place here. I'm going to break break this free by simply pulling. There we go. So one thing, if if you cannot get this broken free by 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 making a quick jerking of the flywheel, there, <clears throat> you're going to have to <coughs> excuse me. You're going to have to assist it by using a, a screwdriver so what you do is is you push the button down on top you lock the shaft in place with this out here so you can access it right there and you pull a little bit of tension with your right hand and that that keeps the uh, the shaft locked over here and then you just kind of push down with uh, you know a, a, a punch or I use a, a, a not so sharp Phillips tip screwdriver and just kind of push the ball in and it just releases it okay so keeping this hole accessible <clears throat> we're gonna rotate the drive shaft 180 degrees and on the back side is a screw you can see the screw is it's on it's on the back side of the ball the ball would be uh, facing back in here now so what we need to do is this screw is what we use to adjust the tension of how much force is that that ball is being pushed onto the inside of that hole there the big mistake that everyone makes is thinking that if they just you know if, if it's really hard to turn it's because the ball is pushing up too too hard um, when in fact the problem is is that when you back this screw out so far to, to release that tension on the ball, the tip, the outside head of that screw is now rubbing on the inside of the safety clutch. And you can see where this one here was doing the same thing. It's, it's, it's worn off the outside head of the screw because it was rubbing on the safety clutch. So when I got here, this one was actually pretty, pretty stiff. And it wasn't because there's was too much uh, too much tension on the ball it was because there was too little tension on it and the damn screw was was rubbing against the inside of, of this clutch so I actually had to increase tension to get the screw off the inside of the clutch 
and it works fine. Now, granted, you keep turning that thing in, you put a lot of pressure on that spring and, and push that ball in, it's gonna eventually get harder. So what you have to do is you have to find that, that, uh, <clears throat> that sweet spot in there where it's not too hard because you have too much tension and it's not too loose creating uh, friction between the head of the screw and the inside of the safety clutch here. So you're gonna have to, I, I, I can almost guarantee you every single sewing machine that came from the, not the manufacturer, but the, uh, uh, the, the vendor, I had to adjust the safety clutch on them. So I can, I can almost guarantee you that every single sewing machine that's been, other than the ones that I have, I have put my hands on up at MCAF, uh, needs to have the safety clutch adjusted. So, and it's very important, and, and that's it's going to save if you ever run into a jam or something, it's going to save this rotary hook over here from, from being damaged if you get a if you get the uh, thread bound up in there or whatever. So, I'm not going to adjust this one just because my light's dying. I'm not going to adjust this one just because I did um, when I first got here, and this one functions correctly. But if I had to at this point, um, you might be able to get. <clears throat> The medium size screwdriver in there it's kind of a kind of a tight fit if not just use your your little screwdriver and tighten it or loosen it as as needed and then when you're done push the button down locking the rotary shaft rotary hook shaft and spin your clutch or your uh, <coughs> drive shaft around and your clutch will lock back into place with that ball boom and that's how you check and do maintenance and, and adjust your uh, safety clutch. So we're, we're going to talk about presser foot tension. I know uh, in one of the earlier videos uh, when we were uh, adjusting the height of the presser feet and stuff like that. We we kind of kind of went over it I'm just gonna rehash it here real quick just to make sure that everybody is Aware of how the presser foot tension works We have we have two different tensioners one is for This one right here is for the lifting presser foot the outside the big outside presser foot And then this right here is for the vibrating presser foot the walking presser foot the little little inside one um, We'll, we'll do the outside one first. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's very simple. It's just a uh, simple screw. Simple screw right here. Uh, it goes through the arm of the machine. It's probably, probably about that long. And on the bottom side, it has a kind of a, a chisel head, chisel point that looks kind of like this. And there's a, a plate that it presses down on. And so, as it screws down, it just presses down on that the uh, that pressure spring. So, w the one thing you want to make sure of is that when 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 you're done, you're done setting the 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 pressure on here, that you want this chisel to be forward and backwards, you know, on on the machine on the, on that spring. You don't want it sitting on there like this because the spring kind of sits sits at an angle, like this sits at an angle. So you want to make sure that the the, uh, the chisel is forward and backwards so you get the, uh, the whole bottom of the chisel pushing down on that spring and not just a, a corner because it's gonna, gonna wobble on you. Um, and you can, you, can uh, you can feel it. You can feel it lock into to, uh, each one of the, the, uh, the forward and backwards. Uh, or you can just, when you're, when you're tightening it up or loosening it, you can just look back there and visually see the, the, the chisel being forward and backwards. This pressure right here, um, it's more, more feel than anything. You, you, you don't want a whole lot of pressure uh, lifting this up. The, the owner's manual tells you what the things, in it, the, the actual um, parameters are and like Newtons or something like that. But uh, basically you just want enough pressure on here that's going to hold the material underneath the presser foot, hold it to the, uh, the, the needle plate without being overly, um, overly strong. Um, obviously, if it's too light, it's not going to not going to hold the material in, and it's not the material's not going to feed. If it's if it's too strong, um, 
it's not going to uh, allow the uh, the material to uh, to move backwards so you have to find that that happy medium um, and you know probably probably one or two two pounds of pressure is, is about all that you're going to need and so when you're adjusting this just make sure the presser foot is down in the down position so you're not grinding that thing into the uh, the, the uh, leaf spring underneath there <clears throat> so that's the the lifting presser foot the vibrating presser foot uh, tension is is right here uh, this thing this thing goes goes down all the way uh, most of the time you don't need it down all the way most of the time all you need is you know somewhere somewhere about in there and and again that's just from from experience you don't want too much pressure on it you don't want too light a pressure you have to find that that happy medium where it's going to hold the material under uh, uh, positively hold the material underneath the pressure foot while the needle goes in and um, not too tight a pressure because if you, you get too much pressure pressure in there it's going to start leaving um, impressions in your material like if you were sewing uh, like naga hide or leather and stuff like that uh, it's going to leave those uh, impressions of the uh, uh, the presser foot into your material which you, you really don't want so that's uh that's the press, presser foot tension 101 for the lifting presser foot and the vibrating presser foot. Okay guys, today we're going to talk about the this hot mess in here. This 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 whole thing is called the thread control assembly. And it's really got two different two different pieces uh, to this assembly. You got this stuff up above here which is your thread tensioning assembly and then you have this thing down in here which is called your thread controller. Today all we're going to talk about is the actual thread tensioning uh, assembly. I'm going to talk about how it works and why it works and, and, and a couple of the problems that we have with it and, and uh, how, how we fix those uh, problems. The obviously the thread tension assembly. Uh, the, these are called the tension discs back there. The thread goes in there, and it's what creates the tension. Uh, depending on what, what size of thread you have, uh, creates the tension so that when you pull the thread up, it makes that uh, that that lock with the bobbin thread, you know, and, and and you keep that lock right in the middle of the material. Um, and that's that's all part of the sewing class. Uh, but. How this thing works is, is kind of interesting, and, and I, I know a lot of people are intimidated by it, and I was too till I till I went to the course and learned how, how it works and stuff. But it's pretty pretty interesting how it how it works. Kind of it's kind of like a, a almost a, a Rube Goldberg uh, type device in here. So a couple things that uh, I just want to rehash here is that when 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 the presser foot's down and it's in the sewing position, we have. The th I've got this threaded here, and the thread goes through the tension disc. We have tension on this this thread here, and I'm I'm, I'm kind of giving it a pull, and I can certainly pull it through. You know, if I pull it really hard, it pulls through. But what happens is, is when the presser feet are lifted, either manually by the presser foot lifting lever in the back, or by the knee lifter down here, you can see. <clears throat> You can see what happens to to the discs up here. All right, so right now the discs, the presser feet are in the down position. The discs are smashed together, uh, creating tension on the thread. Okay, I can't I can't move them. When I lift this lever up, the disc you can see. Okay, so I'm gonna put the presser feet down. They're tight. I'm lift it up again. You can see that the discs separate in here they're they're loose that releases the tension on the thread so that you can easily pull the thread out when you're removing your material the thread will will, will pull right out and that's one of the big problems that uh, that we have is that that feature gets uh, gets lost in here and, and, and I'll show you what causes that and how, how we fix it so but again it doesn't matter whether you lift it up by uh, manually by the uh, presser foot lifting lever in the back and lock it up or whether you use your knee lifter and lift it up it should release the tension so that you can pull your material out uh, from underneath the presser feet and 
as a side note, whenever you do lift this up with your with your knee lifter, you want to make sure you lift it up all the way so that you're not just giving a, a partial tension release. That will still cause it to have tension up there. You want to push your, uh, you know, make sure your knee lifter is, is adjusted correctly and push it all the way over so that you can just simply pull all this thread out of here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this thread here. <clears throat> What we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, take off the the pieces in here and so you guys can see how this this whole thing whole thing works so this is a uh, a knurled nut and it's got some knurls on the uh, the front side behind it it's gonna have a a knurled washer that kind of locks into place and and you notice that <clears throat> as you're tightening this down you know, you hear a click, 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 click. Well, that's because this nut right here has got knurls on it, and there's a washer right here that has knurls on it. And you kind of need that so that as this machine is running and vibrating, it doesn't it doesn't vibrate loose or vibrate tight. It probably won't vibrate tight, but you, you certainly don't want to be uh, have this loosening up tension. You know, so when I when I take these apart, I just lay these pieces <clears throat> out in order that they go in so I'm just gonna put this here and obviously this this washer on the back side is flat so when you, when you go to put this washer back in just make sure the neural nut faces or the uh, the neural part of this washer faces the nut now we have our spring <clears throat> our spring has a uh, a, uh, a a cross piece in it that, that goes into the the, the slot in the uh, the screw stud here and uh, pretty much every single although I don't think it makes a bit of difference every single uh, spring I've ever seen in here shows the uh, the actual spring facing up the, uh, the the end of the spring is facing up uh, personally I don't think it makes a bit of difference I always put them in upwards just because that's how they come from the manufacturer so we got three three pieces remaining we've got this little little black uh, washer disc right here okay and this thing's important you, you gotta actually we got four pieces left you gotta have this little black washer in here this black washer is is what is part of the tension release when you lift it okay and you'll notice that it's got a a little groove a little cutout over here that fits on this pin it goes on on, on the plate there so we're just going to take this off, okay? We're going to set this just like that, and then we have our two tension discs, and probably at least annually, probably more so semi-annually, you're going to want to take these these tension discs off, and you're going to want to clean out all the lint and all the crap and stuff that accumulates in there, and that's that's going to be essential to having you know consistent. Uh, tension on your on your sewing machine and we're going to take off this other tension disc right here these tension discs are, are are both the exact same and yeah we'll clean that off there we go so <clears throat> the last piece that that is often overlooked in here and this piece gets lost easily and this is what one of the one of the probably two or three reasons that you're not able to release tension when you lift up your presser foot is because this little pin in here this little t-pin you can see it right there I'm gonna this thing gets lost I'm trying to get this out without without losing it there we go All right. All right, this, that little sucker right there is the piece that everybody loses. And without that little pin in there, you're not gonna be able to release tension on, um, between the tension discs when you lift up the presser foot. Therefore, when you go to pull your material out, pull all the thread out and stuff like that, it's not going to release tension and you're going to fight with it and it is going to wear you out. <clears throat> so
So this is uh, this is kind of what it looks like uh, without all that stuff in there. Fairly clean. Got some crap in here. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this put this back together, and then we're gonna take this whole assembly off and show you how all of all of these pieces uh, work in concert here. All right, let's see if I can get this sucker in. There we go. this there we go okay so you gotta make sure you put your little t-pin in first <clears throat> then comes your first tension disc you want to make sure that you have you have the two rounded sides the, the smooth sides are, are facing each other to the center make sure it goes on that that pin right there your next next disc goes in facing that one all right so now we're gonna put put this one on you'll notice that this one here has the middle slot across it that, that fits onto your your stud right here and it locks onto that that pin right there that keeps these things from rotating um, the T pin actually what happens is the T pin when when it's forced out pushes against the back of this forcing this thing out and that's what relieves the pressure the tension between the uh, the tension discs so without the t-pin and without this disc on there you're not going to be able to get uh, a tension release when you lift up the presser foot so we're going to put this on here next we're going to put our spring on and it's it's important that uh, make sure that you get this spring centered on that that uh, that disc in there. Uh, I found a couple uh, that the, the spring was actually over this pin over here, and uh, they they put the nut on and everything else, and, and it was uh, screwing up the tension big time. It wasn't adjusting the tension correctly. So make sure that your your spring is on centered into that disc. We're going to put our our knurled washer on and make sure the knurls are facing out so that they uh, they meet with the knurls of the tension nut. And then put your tension nut on so that you got knurl to knurl here. Something's biting here. All right, this should go on pretty, pretty easy. There we go. And <clears throat> guys, this this nut right here is very, very easy to get um, cross-threaded. So make sure it should it should just literally spin right on just like that. If it doesn't spin on like that, you gotta cross thread it, okay? So I've got my spring spring on correctly. And I can feel I can feel it click 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 the uh, the knurls grabbing. So that's how you put the tension uh, discs and uh, tension devices and stuff back on now let's talk about the tension uh, release how how that works when you lift up lift up the presser feet or use your your knee lifter <coughs> so in the back we got uh, we got a, we got a bunch of mechanisms and stuff like that in the back and one of those things that's in the back is a uh, a cam, you know, it's like two two forty fives, and as a as this uh, this cam comes comes up, it pushes a pin 
that, that goes through the, the, the length of the arm here, the width of the arm, it pushes this, this pin forward. And then that pin actually hits a corner of the plate here. I'm going to take this off here in a minute and show you. But the pin hits a corner of this little free-floating plate in the back here. And when that pin hits that, this plate, it, it moves this plate forward, this, uh, this uh, arm. And based upon a, a bunch of levers and stuff, it moves that plate forward via leverage. And then that plate <clears throat> pushes on the tip of that T-pin that, that's in there. The T-pin comes out hits this, pushes on this little black disc right here, squeezes, compresses the uh, spring, and releases the tension in the uh, tension discs. So I'm going to take this, this whole assembly off so that you guys can, can see, and I'm going to show you how, how we lose the ability to release tension in here, and, and uh, one of the other reasons that we lose tension. So in order to get this whole assembly off, uh, there's only only two screws. Well, one one thumb screw and then this other screw that I need to take off. So we're just going to take off this screw here for the thread controller. Right, set it right here. And take off this screw right here. So now this this whole assembly can be taken off. You're going to have to have to remove the uh, the outside of the uh, the thread controller spring right here. So I just I just released it up here. There we go. All right. So I'm going to take this off. Pull this out, and we'll set this back in here. So now we have <clears throat> this whole thread control assembly removed. If you look up right here, this little bar right here is that pin that goes all the way through to the back side. When I lift up the presser foot, you'll see that it pops out. That's what pushes on this uh, little lever back here and makes the thread release. And push it back in and whether I use it manually or whether I use my knee lifter which I'm about to do there's my knee lifter okay it pushes that thing that thing out and I can't push it back in because I got my knee lifter lifted so when I when I release my knee lifter or drop the presser foot it'll go back in based upon the spring tension up here so so this thing this thing sits in here like so <clears throat> and what that pin presses on is this little point right here on this uh, I don't know this this weird looking cam or lever right here presses right here on this point so as it's as it's pressing on on this point right here presses right there you can see down inside here down inside this little groove you can see the the T pin barely through that little slot so it presses on the T pin and it pushes and releases the pressure on your tension discs alright so that's how that works it's kinda of like like I said a Rube Goldberg well the what happens is is you get you get freaking clowns in here that that don't know how to sew. Maybe not so much with this program, but I know back in in, in Paralofts, the sewing machines were kind of out in a common area, and you get everybody and their brother out there, you know, hopping on them. They didn't know what they were doing. That you know they couldn't make a stitch. So <clears throat> whenever you know the sewing machine is is not sewing properly, the first thing they do, the easiest adjustment they can make is is to to spin the tension nut down right well obviously that's not going to fix that will fix very few problems other than a tension problem but uh, so what happens is they spin this tension disc 
all the way down so there's there's no give whatsoever this way in in this whole process then with this tension disc or the tension net completely locked down they lift up the presser foot or, or, or use the knee lift or whatever they they go to to push this in right here and the little T-pin can't move anywhere because it's, it's, it's pressed all the way up there. There's no room for it to give. So what happens is this little um, uh, tab right here gets bent in. So something's got to give and this little tab is what gives and it gets bent in ever so slightly. So when that tab gets bent in, then the pin down here will no longer touch that tab and push it in when you go to lift up your presser foot. So what you have to do is ever, ever so slightly get a pair of like needle nose pliers and, and you have to make sure that that is your problem. That when you lift this up that this is not touching touching this and when this thing is extended that it's not pushing this in. Well, that's that's your problems because this tab has bent in because somebody somebody didn't know what they were doing. They jacked with the machine. So get a pair of needle nose pliers and ever so slightly just bend it out just a little bit at a time, you know. And, and it may take you three or four times of putting this on, checking it doesn't work. You take it off, bend it out just a little bit, and and, and that's how you got to do it in order to get it to get it correctly or get it correctly adjusted. So I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, put this back on, and I'm going to show you what what this this should look like. This this little uh, uh, bracket back here should should be slightly loose when um, when the presser foot is down and there's no tension between this pin and the back here. It should be slightly slightly loose, and we'll see that when I put it back on. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on first. Okay. And again, these, these little machine screws right here, you know, it's really easy to cross thread these things. So be very, very careful when you put these back on. And it should it should literally just, just spin like that back on. If it doesn't, you probably got it cross threaded. I'm gonna put our, our thread guide back on here. So we're, <clears throat> we're going to want to make sure that the uh, the thread guide is you know just kind of eyeball it, make sure that it's it's vertical. Gonna hold it in place here. I'm just going to snug this down. All right, and you want to make sure that after you put this uh, this neural nut here on this thread controller back on that the that it doesn't bind this spring the spring should freely move up and down so back in here um, I don't know Tim maybe if you could kind of come and look down at this angle right in here you can see that that this I've got the uh, I've got the presser foot in the down position okay <clears throat> Got the presser foot in the down position, and and this right here, this plate back here, this lever lever plate, whatever it's called, I don't even know what it's called. Kind of freely moves, you know, when I touch it, moves just a little bit. That's that's kind of what you're looking for when you when you go to make that adjustment on the back. If if, if someone has bent that that tab up, should move. Now when I lift it up like this, okay, you see it's it's locked into place. It doesn't it doesn't move because that 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 pin is pushing on that lever now and it's it's creating the uh, the leverage and it's pushing pushing these out. All right. So these now are free floating. So the tension is released on the discs. 
Okay, so that's a, so the pin being missing, the T-pin being missing in there is one cause of tension not being released. This, this black disc right here being missing is another cause of the tension not being released. And the third cause, and which, you, you know, it's the, I, I found all three of them uh, in equal numbers. And the third cause is, is uh, someone tightening this down all the way and then lifting up the presser foot <clears throat> and bending that tab back there is the third cause of the thread tension not being released when the presser foot is lifted. So, that's it. All right guys, this is, uh, I think this is the, the second to last video that we're gonna make about uh, making adjustments for the machine here. Today, uh, yesterday we talked about the thread tension. Uh, the tension controls up here. Uh, we took it apart and we put it back together. Today, we're gonna talk about this mess down in here and this is the thread controller, All right? And it's got this uh, stainless steel disc on here and it's got this this spring and, and the thread goes, goes around it and everything like that. Um, Guys, most guys don't really know what this thing's for, including myself. I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, what the thread controller does and in, in, in the spring is, is that it keeps tension. I'm going to cycle it through. This thread controller spring keeps tension on the thread as the needle is on the downstroke so that you don't get a loop of thread down here underneath the needle and have the needle pierce its own thread on the downstroke. And I will, I will demonstrate that so if you could just kind of watch the thread control spring. So the needle's on the upstroke right now and as the thread take up lever comes up to pull, to pull the, uh, the thread up through the bobbin and create the stitch, it, it pulls tension on the thread control spring. And the thread control spring keeps tension on the thread on the downstroke of the needle all the way down until the needle touches the material and just slightly penetrates the material and then the thread control spring stops its downward movement and that's keeping keeping this a little bit of tension on this thread again so that the needle doesn't pierce its own thread on the way down that, that would certainly jam up the machine and so once the needle penetrates the material and it starts going down the thread release spring is stopped by the uh, uh, its its limiter stop back here and allows uh, slack in the in the thread so that the rotary hook that comes around to grab the the top thread and and bring it around the bobbin so that it has a thread to do that and then once the needle comes up and the thread take up lever starts going up to complete the stitch right here it pulls tension back on this as the needle has cycled up and down and the needles back down on its way on, on the downstroke and we have tension so that it doesn't pierce itself. All right, um, there, there are a couple critical uh, adjustments that, uh, that need to be made here so that, uh, so that this stuff is working in, in concert with your thread tensioner up here. What, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna take this whole, whole piece off and show you how to put it back together so if, if something has happened or if you have to take it off to clean it or somebody screws with it you can at least get it back together correctly so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this material here and we'll just pull this material out so I'm using black thread with white bobbin and uh, brown material so we can so we can see the contrast in here uh, when we do our 
our tests. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take uh, take this whole assembly off. We went over taking it off yesterday, but there's one more thing that we're going to have to do in order to get the uh, get this lug out of here. So, Tim, if you would look underneath here, and you'll see two different two different screws right here. We got this screw right here and our our rearward screw. This screw right here actually attaches uh, the limiter, the, the actual uh, thread control spring stop over here. This is what we use to adjust the, the, the distance that this thread control spring goes down. And then this uh, rear screw right here is actually what locks the, uh, the actual center uh, screw lug that holds the spring um, into the machine. So, in order to get the, the screw lug out or to adjust the tension, we're going to have to uh, loosen that one. But first, we're just going to take this whole assembly off. Alright, I'll take that off. Put it right there. And then we'll take off our neural nut. So now we're just going to pull off the thread there. So what, what happened was I had the, uh, the, the, the presser foot up and lifted and as you know from uh, the video yesterday it was being it was being pressed on by the, uh, the finger back there it was kind of jamming it making it making it stall or uh, making it stick okay so here's the uh, the assembly here so now what we're left with is the actual thread control spring we've got the uh, the center lug right here and this is the actual uh, the stop for the thread control spring and and now it's probably you can probably better see the difference between these two screws here and what they what they work or what they uh, what they do. All right, so we're just going to leave this thread uh, thread spring stop on, and we're going to take take this lug out. And to adjust the tension on the spring, you know, we just put our our screwdriver in here. But before we turn it, we have to unlock it. And I'm going to actually take this whole thing out here. That's enough. Maybe not. There we go. Okay, so so what we have here is we have our thread control lug, and you can see in the very back here this this spring fits into this little hole. In this this lug, right, right there. Can you see that, Tim? Right there. Can you see that? Right there. Yeah. Okay. So the 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 spring wraps around and then it pins itself into the actual lug. So when when we want to increase tension on this spring, we we literally just turn this lug counterclockwise and it, and it tightens up that spring because it's locked in there okay so we just turn it counterclockwise and I'm going to clean this mess off here take this opportunity to clean a little bit <clears throat> so I wanted everyone to see how this thing how this thing fits fits on here and know that you're not going to be able to turn this inside here until you loosen the screw back there you'll see a lot of people that all they'll do is they'll take off 
take off this neural nut that fits on here, you know, and I'll put a damn screwdriver in here and try and turn this thing and it's locked because of the uh, locking screw there, the set screw, and they'll snap off one of these sides of this this uh, mm -hmm. lug here and that's 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 how it starts going downhill. So we're just going to put this back in and uh, I'm just going to lightly tighten this back up here. Okay. So we are there we go. So it's just barely tightened. Um, so we're going to put this this whole assembly back on here just like we did yesterday or the day before. We have to one thing I forgot to say is when when you go to pull this out to put this sucker back on, you know, just pull it out just far enough to where you can get this on. You don't you don't want to be stretching this thing out, stretching the uh, the spring out and bending this this wire and and whatnot. So just pull it out just far enough to get the assembly back on, and then uh, it should you know snap and go go right back into place. It's, it's kind of loose in there. I'm not tightening it down yet. Mm. I'm going to put this back on here. Making sure we are vertical. That's pretty good. Alright. So now that everything's good, we're just gonna just you know, hand tighten this up here. Okay. That's good. So what we need to do now is we need to adjust this this spring over here to to where it's it's actually keeping tension on the thread. First thing I'm gonna, I got to do is I got to rethread this machine now. So we obviously have no no tension on this spring you can see so in order to create more tension we have to first unlock the screw here and and now we we want to turn this lug here you need to make sure that this this neural nut is, is loose too so now we just need to turn this lug counterclockwise you can see that we're starting to get spring tension okay on the spring here the amount of the amount of force that that you want on this spring is says in the operator's manual um, but it's about you know it's not much maybe four ounces five ounces of, 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 of force and depending on the type of thread that you're using is going to dictate the amount of force on this spring. So what you really want to do is you want to adjust your thread, adjust the spring tension to 
to, to double F thread. Double F thread or T, T135 thread is the middle size thread that we use. We got T70, T135, and then we got T270, which is E thread, double F, and then four cord. So if you get it adjusted to double F thread, the tension is probably not too strong for E thread, but also strong enough to pull the four cord through. So, um, but uh, before we actually set the tension, what we need to do is we need to set the, the actual operating distance for this spring. But in order to set the operating distance, we have to have just a little bit of tension in there. So yeah, you know, it's kind of kind of a circular reference. So we're just going to put a little bit of tension on this this uh, spring here, just you know, just a little bit, and just kind of lock it down for now, so we can make our set our distance stop. And I'm gonna grab this here. Okay. About out of. Okay, so I'm going to just do a couple a couple stitches here to get this cycling through. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to make sure that that this spring right here is holding tension on our thread up into the point where the thread pierces the material. So right right about here I can feel the needle starting to pierce the material right right about there you can see that it's you know I don't know maybe a half a millimeter a millimeter into the material okay the idea of the takeaway is that and we need to have tension on this thread until that needle pierces the material otherwise if we don't have tension on the thread down here you may develop a loop instead of having this thread nice and tight you may have a loop underneath there and that needle will will pierce through through its own thread and that's certainly going to jam your machine up so right there I've got the needle in and I've got just and I'm going to continue on with the cycle I've got just a little bit little bit more of travel in in the spring so this this stop is correctly set but if it wasn't set what you would do is you would find where the needle pierces the material maybe goes in up to about the eye and then you would loosen your set screw here on the the, the limiter all right and you would move you would move your 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 actual stop here up and down until it it reach it touches where the spring is at that at that specific point and then raise it up just just a little bit so this one here I've got it loose and I'm gonna raise this up to where it touches the spring okay and I'm just gonna raise it just so it touches the spring right there and I'm gonna raise it just a little bit more All right right there and we're going to lock it into place okay. so like everything else we're going to cycle this through we're going to watch it we're going to make sure that we are so I am touching the material right there that's where I hit the material and so you can see I got just a little bit a little bit more travel in the spring once I pierce the material so this is this is actually set pretty well so we've got our stop set now now we need to set our, our tension so what you want to do is we'll loosen loosen this screw and we'll adjust our tension and, and, and you can see that it, it doesn't take much to really increase the tension on this, this spring here. So in fact, when I, when I tighten this spring up, this spring is, is actually getting tight, and I let it go, you'll see it. Let me loosen this sucker up here.
you can see how the spring absolutely has no, no tension whatsoever. Okay, and as I start tightening it up, it will, it will touch our stop right here. Once it touches the stop, you really only need maybe an eighth of a turn to get the proper tension, roughly. Not, not much. And so between no tension and just a, a simple quarter of a turn, we've probably added six or eight ounces worth of, worth of pressure on that. So it doesn't, it doesn't take much. So get it to where it touches, and then maybe about an eighth of a turn, and that's gonna be about, about the right amount of tension. So that, that looks pretty good. So again, what you want is, you wanna make sure that the tension on this is, is light enough that when you have this thin thread in here, that it's able to, uh, the thin thread, is able to lift it and um, and pull it through, and you don't want uh, and also you want it you want it strong enough so that it will pull the fourth four cord the heavy four cord through, um, but you don't want it so strong that when you have the lightweight material in here, lightweight thread, that that the uh, when it goes to the thread take up lever comes up that it it won't um, actuate the actual spring so you have to find that that medium in there and the best thing to do like I said is to put double F thread in there and adjust it with double F thread on and that's probably going to be a, a pretty good reference for uh, correct tension for both well all three the, the double F thread in the middle as well as your lightweight uh, E thread and your heavyweight four cord. So let me just get this set here. So we're good, and then right there, and then we give it about an eighth of a turn, and that's yeah, that's that's pretty good tension. Maybe a little bit more right there. And sometimes you may need to use two screwdrivers because sometimes that lug in there is pretty loose, and sometimes the lug in here is pretty loose, and when you uh, uh, pull your screwdriver out to go tighten it, your, your, your lug will, will spin back around. Okay, so you may have to have two screwdrivers, one to, to tighten this and hold it in place, another one to uh, tighten the screw, the, uh, the set screw back there. So now we've adjusted our distance, uh, distance of travel downward. We've adjusted the pressure of, of the, uh, the thread control spring, and now we've got uh, this screw up here. What what this screw does? It adjusts the actual rotation of this whole this whole thread control disc in here, and it's really not that critical of a uh, of an adjustment. What that does is it controls the amount of thread that is allowed out when um, when the spring goes down. Um, I've found that just about on every single machine, if you just set this right in the middle, put that screw right in the middle of that slot there, it's going to give you the proper amount of, of thread let out um, when the machine um, is actually in the down position. And, and what that does is it gives you, it, it adjusts the amount of thread that is 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 allowed to go down in here so that when the rotary hook picks up that thread, it has enough thread to go around around the bobbin. And honestly, this would probably work if you had this thing rotated all the way to the right or all the way to the left. But uh, setting it right in the middle um, seems to be a pretty good uh, a pretty good medium there. So that is our thread controller, and obviously you want to make sure you tighten your uh, tighten your neural nut down and that the uh, the spring still is uh, is free to free to move up and down, and like everything else, make sure you do a test so and, and test, and you're watching this thread control spring that it's actuating, and that your needle is 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 perforating the material, penetrating the material before it stops its uh, or just before it stops its downward travel.
Okay guys, this is the uh, last video in the series here for um, maintenance and adjustments for, for the sewing machine. Today we're going to talk about stitch length and um, adjusting, adjusting the feed regulator, uh, all, all this mess over in here, so that we have our stitch length in forward matching the stitch length when the thing is sewing in reverse. And what, what, why does that matter? Well, for, for us, probably doesn't matter as much for the type of sewing that we do on, on uh, Cordura nylon and, and, and stuff like that. However, this, this machine is a, a, a very popular machine for people that do upholstery, heavy duty upholstery, like car seats and, and leather chairs and stuff like that. And so when they are sewing, uh, stuff like like leather car seats and leather chairs when they come to an end and they have to uh, back tack and lock in stitches and stuff like that they need to make sure that when they go in reverse that they are dropping that thread exactly in the same holes because they don't obviously don't want to perforate like leather and plastic and aldehyde and, and vinyl and stuff like that um, uh, and that, that would look pretty unprofessional so it's very important for them um, but generally speaking, it's, it's probably a good idea, not a good idea, it is a great idea to have our stitch links match, you know, both in forward and in reverse uh, in the, uh, the areas where, uh, within that, that the, uh, the, the stitch link areas where, where we operate here. <clears throat> so with that, if you want to kind of look up here to the uh, little poster I made, uh, and this is this is in part of the sewing handout. So basically, we, we kind of break it down to the, the three different sizes of threads that we use. We got our, our lightweight T70 E thread, middleweight T135 double F, and then the 274 cord. When when we're using different threads and for for different reasons and different processes and stuff like that, we have different stitch lengths that we use. But as a, a general guide um, and as a, a, a reference reference point, what you're going to want to use is generally speaking, when, when you're when you're pulling E thread here, you're going to want to have it so that the stitch length is is about eight stitches per inch, or an actual individual length of the stitch is going to be about three millimeters. Okay, so. Uh, stitch length is, and, and, and that's the two ways that stitch lengths are um, are identified, both by numbers of stitches per inch as well as the individual stitch length. Uh, and then when you're when you're pulling double F thread, generally speaking, you're going to be um, uh, putting down six six and a half stitches per inch, give or take a little bit, maybe six, maybe seven, uh, which is about a four millimeter stitch length. Our machine here. The, the dial on our machine that uh, where we change our stitch length is, is numbered one, 1 through 10. Now these numbers represent the stitch length in millimeters. Okay so once it's set correctly you know if it's on a 4 the stitch length will be 4 millimeters. Once it's set on 6 or 7 the stitch length will be 6, six or 7 millimeters respectively. Some some sewing machines, this this index right here represents numbers of stitches per inch. You need to you just need to know that whenever you're using someone else's sewing machine and, and, and it's got a bunch of numbers up there. But uh, obviously, the the bigger this number is, the longer the stitch length. And on some machines that have this indicated with stitches per inch, the bigger the number, the smaller the stitch length is because that's. The bigger the number is more stitches per inch. But anyway, ours is, is representative of stitch length in millimeters. When, when you go to, uh, to make an adjustment uh, on, the, on the stitch length here, if you want to go to a, a, a longer stitch length, obviously this, this, uh, this locking mechanism right here, you, you have to push this back because it's got a, a, thing, a, a pin in there that locks this dial from rotating push it back and it's, it's pretty easy to adjust your stitch length up into higher stitch lengths. However, 
because of the, the the way it operates inside there when when you go to reduce the stitch length go to a smaller number it's 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 a little bit tighter uh harder to turn because you're actually pushing down that that v in there that uh that that holds the uh reversing lever uh the feed regulator uh in its in its position so what's what you're going to want to do is is push this down and just kind of hold the the reversing lever down a little bit and it makes it a lot easier to spin this dial down to a, a, a smaller number again going up it's not a problem going back down to smaller number you want to use your reversing lever so what one of the uh, one of the problems that, that we've had in, in, in nearly every single sewing machine that we've uh, we've had up at the schoolhouse up at MCAF uh, the the forward and backwards uh, stitch length was not set correctly at the factory as well as this index which represents the 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 respective stitch length was not properly set so that's what we are going to to do today, we're gonna we're gonna first set the stitch length so that it is uh, uh, the same in, in both the forward and backwards, and then once we get that done, we're going to uh, uh, slip this dial here so that it is respective of the actual stitch length that it's that's set on at that time. <clears throat> Having said that, um, there's a uh, kind of a, a glitch in, in in this machine, and I I don't know what the answer is to it. But one of the problems with this machine is that when you set the stitch length uh, so that it is, it is the same uh, both in the forward and backwards mode, it's, it's, it's only good for that respective stitch length. For example, up here, we're going to use somewhere between a 3 and 5 millimeter stitch length depending on the thread that we have and you may go down to you know a two and a half millimeter stitch length or you may go up to a five and a half six millimeter stitch length but generally speaking we're going to be operating somewhere between three and five millimeters okay so the middle ground in there is is four millimeters and that's what we're going to that's what we're going to aim for is 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 having the forward and backwards um, stitch length adjusted at four millimeters so that it is perfectly uh, perfectly even. Therefore, when we go down to a three millimeter or we go up to a five millimeter stitch length, the, the difference between the forward and reverse is, is gonna be very, very slight. Um, again, I, I, don't, I don't have the answer, I don't know why, but when you set the forward and reverse so that it's the same, once you start dialing off of that, that stitch length, the, um, the forward and reverse, they start getting, uh, they start separating in, in distance uh, with uh, the actual stitch length. And, and, and we'll actually demonstrate that. So our goal here uh, today, and it should be your goal too, is to get this adjusted so that at four millimeters it is the exact same in forward as it is in reverse okay the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, kind of find a, a a reference point now this machine here um, is is or, or actually was set correctly uh, prior to this video I just adjusted it slightly so that the stitch length is off a little bit and so that this dial is off a little bit so that we can go through and correct it so you guys can see how that's done. So, but if, if you really don't have a very good starting point, you're not sure exactly where you need to start, what you're gonna wanna do is dial this all the way down so that it's the, the smallest number and so you can see that this goes you know well past zero and it stops you know pretty much right at right at 10 so we'll go halfway is is about right there actually halfway is about about right there okay and then we'll we'll, we'll simply take it back this way a little bit to kind of kind of represent about a number number four four and a half millimeter roughly 
but that's just a good starting point. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll adjust that as we start making these corrections here. So what we, what we have to do, the way we, the way we test this is, is we're going to use, we're going to use paper and we're going to start punching holes in paper and we're, we're pretty much going to measure these, these holes. Um, and you're going to find that, that we have a, a size 16 needle in here. Uh, the smaller the needle, the probably the easier it's going to be to to see these uh, the the stitch length in here. So I'd recommend putting a size 16 needle in. If you don't have a size 16, just use a size 22 or size 24, whatever. It's just going to be easier with a with a size 16 needle. So I have the the speed set <clears throat> for speed one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a a seam up here. You know, probably three or four inches. And then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to run this in reverse back, and we're going to see the difference in the the stitch lengths. Okay. So we're just going to start right here. Now I'm going to move this over and, and what I'm what I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna put this this line of, of stitches that I just made just outboard of this presser foot because I don't want this presser foot smashing on them and kind of close them down it makes it a little bit harder to see. Okay, and so I'm gonna get try and get this needle dropped in, you know, pretty much directly square with this first hole. right there and while holding the reverse lever down I'm gonna run a seam backwards here Wow okay so yeah I made a made a pretty big adjustment <laughs> to, to take this off out of adjustment so you can see other than other than the, the oil that's on here if I was to the what helps me see it is is I just connect these these holes here and you can see how the stitch length so this is forward and this is reverse and 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 and, and we're at 4.5 millimeters okay so you can see how the stitch length in reverse is significantly larger than in in forward so what we have to do is, and, 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 and we're at four and a half, but, but really, we're not really worried what this dial says here. We're just right now concerned about getting these, these stitches equal. And then once we get these stitches equal, then we can slip the dial to the respective number, and then we go to a four millimeter stitch, and then we, and then we adjust it there. So we need, to, uh, we need to increase our forward stitch length and in the process of increasing our forward stitch length, you know, the way it's cammed in there, it's going to decrease our reverse stitch length. And the way that we do that is up here, I've already got the, uh, uh, the pieces removed out of this. You're going you're gonna to want to have to take off this back plate back here. We've done that in a, a couple other, uh, to make a couple other adjustments. So I've taken that off. Uh, you don't need to do anything with the uh, oil reservoir. Just uh, just move the cover out of the way, and you can see down in here there are there are two two holes right here and here that are on two different pieces of this um, this cam and this shaft. All right, so those are our reference point in in the uh, the manual. It's got two index lines it shows two index lines but I've um, even with the RB3 I've never seen index lines uh, it's always been these two little holes and then right next to it right here this is the uh, the screw that that we're going to uh, loosen and if if your stuff is way out these two two dots here when when they're pretty much parallel to each other is going to be where you want them to be 
Uh, but again, once we start fine tuning this, uh, they may not be exactly opposite each other, and that's that's what we're about to do. So, in order to make this adjustment, our our reverse stitch length is much larger than our forward stitch length. So, th think about which one you need to make larger. So, if we needed to make the rear one larger, which we don't need to do, we would loosen this screw and we would push this this uh, this movable cam here to the rear. That would make the rear larger, but we don't want to do that in this case. We need to make the, the, the forward stitch larger, so we're going to loosen this screw and we're going to lift this up and push this dot forward, okay? And it, it does not take very much adjustment to significantly increase this. Uh, like, for example, uh, the, the length that I have to go to get these corrected right now uh, is probably... I probably don't even need to bring those dots parallel, just just prior to parallel. I mean, I'm talking maybe a 32nd of an inch movement is, is all we're gonna probably need here. So it's gonna be hard to, 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 to film this, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get in here and, and move, this, move this cam a little bit. And so you wanna be very careful, just loosen it. Now to lift it up, you can put your screwdriver in here and just kind of lift it up a, just a, a little bit and I, I just moved that thing up probably probably a 32nd of an inch and you don't have to really tighten it down just kind of get it snug because because we're, we're gonna be adjusting this thing again so now that we've made an adjustment, we're going to run at the same stitch length. We're going to run another set of test holes here. Right, and you can see how the, uh, the forward stitch length has significantly increased. And we'll do a reverse. And how the reverse has significantly decreased. Okay, and so we're we're starting to get a lot closer here. I'm just gonna connect these because it makes it easier to kind of visualize. So you can see that we're we're getting a lot a lot closer. I still need a larger larger forward stitch length. So I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit more here. Probably another 32nd of an inch. So I've only moved this thing a 16th of an inch now. And we'll do another another test sew here. Alright, so we're we're getting we're getting pretty close. We're still a little bit a little bit off. We still gotta decrease our, our reverse stitch length and increase the uh, forward. But you can see how we're we're getting closer. So let me uh, let me make one more adjustment here. That one there was was a pretty big pretty big adjustment. 
not quite a not quite a sixteenth. But it's pretty big. So we're 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 real close right there. So these are these are the holes and actually they start they start separating down here. So this is that's that's pretty damn close right there. Um, I honestly I don't know that you're going to be able to get much much closer than that you can see that the forward stitch length you know over over probably a dozen stitches is just slightly larger than the reverse and honestly i i, I don't think you're going to be able to get much uh much closer than that so we're going to call we're going to call this good right here so now what we need to do is we need to measure this this stitch length on our index here, it shows that it's it's about four and a half. Right? But we're gonna we're gonna put our thing up here, and it's actually and when you're measuring this, you, you probably don't want to measure just one stitch length. You know, you want to measure about four or five or six. You know, and then just kind of divide the. Uh, uh, the, the distance by that number of stitches because it's going to give you a more accurate reading so so I'm just going to start right here at, at 10 and we'll go down we'll go down to, to this one that's that's 30 33 over 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so 33 millimeters over 8 stitches so that's that's about four four and a quarter maybe four and an eighth millimeters uh, per stitch length so our so j just over four the problem that we have is our index right here is reading four and a half now there's there's only two tick marks in between numbers so it's either on the number the half number or the number um, so I, I would say that this number right here is probably closer to four than it is to four and a half. So what we need to do is we need to um, pull this uh, this dial off, slip it over so that it is actually reading four while the machine is set up for four millimeter stitch length. So and that was just kind of a guess when I when I put it at four and a half, and and that's why I was saying when when you go to find your um, uh, your reference point, you know, you go halfway and then just move it over like like one uh, uh, one number, and that's kind of gets you in the ballpark here. So, a couple things about this about this dial here. One of the uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this screw off here. One of the dials that we had on a brand new brand new damn machine up at MCAF had these pins on backwards so it's just really the screw you got your you got your dial right here on the back are the uh, the uh, the locking locking lugs that uh, that this goes into right here this one goes into and locks into the uh, respective positions that's why you have to with this spring in here you have to push this back so that this that pin will, will will go in, and you're able to turn, and you release it, and then the the nipple of that that locking pin locks into one of these uh, grooves back here, and just just holds us into place. Um, and this right here is your limiting pin, and this this pin right here fits in the the outside groove here, and and limits limits your travel. From from here 
all the way over to here so it, it won't allow you to go below one and it won't allow you to go above ten so that's what that's for but these pins they, they look you know almost the same the problem is is that this one on the bottom here is significantly longer than this one on the top right and in one of our machines that, that, that came from from the manufacturer the the, uh, the vendor they had those those damn pins backwards and they had the, they had the long one up on top and, and you couldn't push the detent in to, to adjust the uh, the stitch length so it, it, it wore me out trying to figure out why we couldn't do that and then I, I took the thing off and realized that they had the pins backwards so so the long pin goes on the bottom the short pin goes on the top very simple you got this got this spring and you got your um, the, the 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 detent here that the locking mechanism so you put that on and you just kind of hold this hold this back and now we have to slip this scale so we just checked our our measurements and we're at four so when we put this on you can you can see that there are uh, knurls in here on that piece and those knurls line up with with the knurls on the outside of this uh, this lug here this screw so we're going to put this in here like so and we're going to get the number four lined up as best we can on our dial right there and then we're just going to put this screw in here Just kind of snug it down, and we're just going to make sure that we can rotate it, and it rotates, and, and you see the uh, reversing mechanism go up and down. So, so you can hear it click in. Okay. Um, for some reason, directly behind the numbers, they don't have a slot for that for that pin to lock into. They've got a lug, so your numbers are either going to be left or right of 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 this line here. I I, I don't know why they did that, but uh, so so we're you know our, our indicator is showing just slightly over four, and that's actually what our stitch length is is slightly over four millimeters. So what we want to do now is we want to do another test now that we've got this set forward and backwards and then I'll show you what happens when you start getting away from smaller and larger than the uh, our, our center stitch length which is our center stitch length is four because that's the center of the uh, operating area so so we're just going to run another another test line here forward and reverse All right and and it's still the same I mean we, we made no adjustment to it so it should be pretty much the same you can see that after about We start getting separation after, you know, I don't know, probably about six six stitches. So we're we're pretty much pretty much balls on right there. Um, like I said, you're probably not going to be able to get it any closer than that, and that's going to be that's going to be pretty good. So that's uh, that's forward and reverse, and that's a four millimeter stitch length. And we'll just measure this again just to make sure. So we go from 10 to 33 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 stitches. So that's about 30, that's about 8, eight stitches per, uh, excuse me, a 4 millimeter stitch length. And the number of stitches per inch goes from, we'll say from 6 to 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. 
a little over six, maybe six and a quarter roughly. So up here you'll see that a four millimeter stitch length is about six and a half stitches per inch, about six and a quarter roughly. So that's kind of kind of what we're what we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to a, a five five millimeter stitch length, and I'm gonna run a uh, run a pass here. And you can uh, already see that at, at five, five millimeters, the reverse, the reverse stitching is smaller than the forward stitches. Okay, and so that's one of the hiccups with this machine is that is that uh, when you start getting left and right smaller and larger from your set um, forward and reverse equalized uh, stitch length, it, it starts getting smaller and larger respectively. So I'm going to go down to a three millimeter stitch length now, and we should have the reverse effect. The forward one should be smaller than the reverse. Right. And you can see it is it is just that. So this is three millimeters, and this is our forward, and this is our reverse. So we'll just connect the dots here, and you can see that our, our reverse is, is longer stitch length than our, our forward. So we got our four millimeter, which is pretty pretty square, pretty even. Uh, five millimeter, the forward is longer than the reverse. Three millimeter, the forward is smaller than the reverse, and that's one of the hiccups of this uh, this machine. I'm not sure exactly how they you know how how to fix the, fix that, or even if you can fix it. I know that the uh, the like the professional tailors and upholsters and stuff like that you know they they pretty much only run on one stitch length and they get everything you know fine-tuned and everything so that it's just works at that stitch length um, so once once you're done just make sure before you close all this up that you you know just give this one final snug back here and make sure that that you're locked locked down again you don't have to gird it down just snug it down close everything up Put your plate on the back and this machine is, is now ready for you to, to, to rock and roll with.